So how many of you have trained a machine learning model before? Hmm, a lot of people. How many of you know what TCP and UDP is? Great. And how many of you know what those attacks are? Okay, cool, cool. Okay, so uh, hi, I'm Deborah. Thank you for being here. Today we'll talk about uh, training and deep learning model to detect those attacks on microcontrollers. And okay. Uh, let's start. We have a lot of, of microcontrollers for this, this research. We use the ESP32. It's a MCU a microcontroller unit and it's very used in, in yeah, IoT projects. Uh, because a lot of things, like, firstly, I think because it's affordable, it's uh, in Brazil, it's 30 reais, I think it's like $5 or 200 pesos, so it's not very expensive. And it has a, a very good development framework and a large community. And uh, it has a lot of nice things in the, in the MCU itself, but the main for me, the, the nicest, nicest thing is that it has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, Bluetooth connectivity on the ship. Like, you don't need to, to get another devi uh, device, MCU, to, to get this connectivity. And it's really awesome. And it's affordable. And yet, I don't see uh, many projects, many, many, any IoT projects, uh, mainly in Brazil, where I live. And I thought, uh, my, my thinking was that IoT, to, to implement an uh, IoT project, uh, you need a, a lot of money and, and things like that. But then when I found out about the DSP32, I thought, OK, it's not, isn't, it is not very expensive. And when I saw the device, OK, I'll play with it to, to make people aware of that the device exists and we can build nice things with it. And cool, what's the project then? Uh, IoT devices are easy targets for cyber attacks due to a lot of things, but mainly to the poor cycles of updates. Like uh, we have a cell phone, a cell phone has today, the cell phones have a lot of computational power. We have internet all the time, so it's easy to, to update the, the software. But these devices are like, uh, they don't have many computational resources, and they are out there in the field, so it's, it's hard to, to update them. And here we are focusing on a, one type of attack, is a volumetric attack, specifically DOS attacks, and we will talk um, more about this later. DOS attacks are like when the attacker uh, sends a lot, of, a lot of packets to try to shut, shut down, to interrupt the... Uh, Funcionamento comum. The, uh, yeah, to, to make it stop working, to make the system stop working. Uh, <laughs> and today I'll, I'll talk about three main challenges uh, in this project. There are, tell, tell us a little bit about the story of how, how it went. Uh, the main one was, do the features of my training data set match the features in my production setting? So the data set I was using, uh, is the SIC IoT dataset 2012, uh, created by the Canadian Institute for Cybersecurity. And it's a state of our dataset for these things. And the, the nice thing is that it's built specifically for IoT devices. So it's not easy to find datasets for, for this. If you see the title of the talk, it, ha it says the DOS attacks. It was because <laughs> at first I was using a dataset for, with the DDoS attacks, but it was very old and it, it didn't have a legitimate traffic there for me to work with. And this dataset uh, is newer and it has uh, attacks, attack, uh, pa attack packets and legitimate packets, so I went for those attacks. And cool, to communicate with devices, the, the network devices, the ESP32 has uh, implemented the TCP IP uh, uh, model, and it has a lot of protocols. And to do that, it uses uh, LW, a lot of <laughs> letters and names. Uh, for that, it uses LW IP. It's like uh, an implementation of the TCP IP protocols for, for microcontrollers. 
And the protocol has four, four layers, and implement, it implements the, the four layers of the, of the, the, of the model. Uh, yeah, so, so we can, is the data set has PCAPs. PCAPs are files that uh, network analyzers, uh, packages, pro programs use, use to you start the, the data, and then we can uh, get these pickups and extract the features. And in my in my research, I, I extracted uh, ten features, and I extracted them to CSV files. Uh, and the problem was, okay, I have these features in my my training data set, but I need to get the same features in the inside the DSP32. And it was a challenge because uh, it was my first time working with this stack, this LWIP stack, and it was very hard to, to find uh, the, the how could I get these features there, mainly because there's no documentation on the LWIP uh, stack. But if, to my surprise, ChatGPT was really helpful. I was skeptical, but it really worked. I could ask them. Them, <laughs> I could ask the, the I could ask the model, and then uh, it would give me the answer. I, of course, I had to do some tricks and things like that, but it was really help, really helpful. Also, the work in one uh, I'll show in the references, but the work uh, of some Brazilian researchers on this they they did the same thing uh, the same thing I was trying to to do, and they open sourced the code in, on GitHub. And without them, I think uh, I wouldn't be able to advance the, the research so far. And it's really nice because because the work of the, the, because of the work they did, and then they open they open sourced the code, and now I can build something on top of it. It's amazing. That's why I love open source. And yeah, there's, this was the, the main challenge done. Okay. Then the next challenge was how much time do I have? Okay. Then the, ne <laughs> the next challenge was how do I split the training in the test data? Uh, so the data set has uh, legitimate traffic, like real traffic, and is captured by days. Like uh, one day they they have a they had a room with a lot of IoT devices, and they they captured the the, the network packets. For the attacks, they only have pickups with only attack packets. And they the attacks were carried carried out based on these three pro protocols HTTP, UDP, and TCP. And uh, our goal in in machine learning is always to uh, resemble create data sets for training and tests that uh, resemble the the real uh, setting, like when the model is out there. We we'll, the model received the same kind of, of data. And uh, I, I have three, pa three packs, brackets for each device, and then I thought, okay, I could use two for training and, and one for testing. But uh, it was not that simple because I couldn't just concatenate the, the packets. I will explain. Here are examples of legitimate traffic, like these pickups only have uh, Real, real data, no, no attacks in these network packets, and this uh, for this atomic coffee maker is a IoT device, and for the HTTP protocol we have three pickups, and each pickup has only attack uh, network packets, and our goal, as I was saying, our goal is always to uh, create data sets that resembles the the main data that the model will see live. And a lot of after a lot of thinking and back and forth and and things like that, we came to a solution that I don't know if is the the best one, but that is something. And here I'll explain quickly. Uh, the green ones are the legitimate uh, packets, and the red ones are the the attack packets. First, we get a random legitimate traffic, legitimate traffic. Like here, I got the. The two packets. Oh, and the numbers are the timestamps of the packets. Uh, then we add this, the, the, the time of the random packets to the attack packets. Then we concat them. And finally, we sort them. 
Here, uh, we don't see the, the main gotcha of the, this technique because the, we are working with integers without the numbers after the dot. But in, a, in the real packets, they, they came very fast. And then we will see like uh, blocks of, uh, of attacks and uh, legitimate traffic packets in uh, between them. And this is ideal because this is what happens in, in real life. Like when you're having an attack, uh, you don't only see the attacks. You see also the, the, the real traffic going on. And yeah, this, this was how we, we got the this generation of the training data set. And the, first, the last <laughs> challenge was learning C. C++, why are you laughing? <laughs> was learning C++ on the go. Uh, I'm a Python developer. I thought, OK, uh, I work with Python for a lot of time. It will be fine. Uh, for the most part, part, it was fine. But then there were some, thing, some things that were really hard. Uh, even to search, search for, and ChatGPT also. Uh, I thought I would hear ChatGPT a lot of, of time today, but here I am uh, bringing the ChatGPT to the conference. And it also, the, the, the model also helped, helped me. Uh, for example, uh, here we have a um, Boolean equation. Uh, what do you think this, this could, uh, this will, this <laughs> What would be the result of this thing, this code? Uh, zero or one, one, right? If they are equal, no, wrong. Uh, somehow, this percent is a bitwise uh, operator in, in C. And it actually, for this, this TCP thing, uh, variable, the, the expression would give us, will give us or, uh, zero or two. And why this is important? Because the training data set for this, for this uh, feature, uh, the feature is, is 0 or 1 there. And if we change it to 2, like we are the, our distribution is different from the training data set. And this is like, it will break the assumption for the model to work well. Five, thank you. And, <laughs> and yeah, so to handle that, we, we had to, uh, uh, get a, another expression to, uh, to check if it's different than zero, then we would output one, and if not, it would output zero. It was hard to find because if you go to <laughs> Google and uh, type percent C++, it always gives, uh, it always, it gave me the, the Boolean uh, percent. I, it was hard to find it. Uh, doing uh, Google searches, but ChatGPT uh, was able to explain to me. Uh, cool, nice, but does the model work? Uh, it has same features. I'll go to the, the architecture is very simple. We have two dense layers. Uh, I know <laughs> I'm not going <laughs> to explain this. If you want to learn more, talk with me later. Uh, we have, I'll focus on uh, one thing I, I want to, to focus on is the recall for the attack packets. We have 99%. This means that of all the, the attacks in the data set, the model was able to, to get 99% of them. And the answer, actually, the answer to whether the model works or not depends on the application and the IoT system in place. And I wanted to get a glimpse of that, so I've tested, tested it with a UDP server running on SP32. UDP, UDP server is a uh, layer two protocol that is like TCP protocol has a connection. So if you send a packet, uh, it will, OK, it didn't arrive there. Let's try it again. For UDP, you just send, and you don't care if the receiver received it or not. And it's a real setting for uh, like IoT devices. They are, sensor, they are sensors and things like that. So it's, a, it's very faster than TCP, so uh, that's why it's used. And I used Python scripts to simulate the legitimate traffic and uh, another one for the SD attacker. The attacks ran for 60 seconds, and the real traffic ran for 80 seconds. And the final one worked uh, better than I expected. It was uh, able to reduce the, like, if I didn't use the firewall, uh, 
if I use the firewall, 72% of the, those, the malware packets were dropped. And the best, one, the best thing is that it didn't disrupt the legitimate traffic, so uh, it was really uh, helpful. Uh, but we can see that the recall is very different from the one on the test, test data set. And, and yeah, in the lessons we learned with that is that uh, those attacks can vary uh, sig significantly in nature. Like this attack I simulated, uh, it was already different from the ones I saw in the training data set. And a model training for, for one kind of data set may, might work well but then it's not guaranteed that it will work uh, so well in another uh, any data set, in another data set. And what we recommend is that uh, the, if you are ever <laughs> building an IoT system, uh, you collect your data and then you train the, your, uh, your model for, for your system. And then you can replace the, only the model in, in your system uh, and we called it DOS Guard 32 because of ESP32. And <laughs> yeah, this, this was uh, the, the main uh, results we got. Okay, you don't, this model will probably work well, so, uh, work so well in your system. And all the code is available on, on GitHub. And mainly our, our our main goal was to make people aware that this device is e exists and that is cheap and that we can build IoT, IoT devices with it, IoT systems with it. Uh, yeah, and that's it. Thank you very much. If you have questions, this is my uh, tweet, Twitter. <laughs> I don't have Twitter. My GitHub handle uh, to see the, the code and things like that. And yeah, thank you. And these are the references. Do we have questions for Deborah? Yes. Yeah. OK. <laughs> OK, I think he raised it on Sans first, and then I'll come to you. Hello there. Thank you. How do you deploy? I mean, I guess you deploy the model inside the ESP32, right? Yeah. What do you use, like TensorFlow Lite or? Yeah. Yeah, so you have to do some kind of conversion, or the, the, the model already comes like ready for it. Cool, cool. Uh, a lot of headache, headache. <laughs> <laughs> to do that, but yeah, uh, I, we trained the model using Keras, yeah. and then we, they have a tool, uh, TF Lite, we have a tool to convert it to dot .tf Lite, and then we need to convert it to dot .cc, because to be deployed in the, in the MCU, uh, it doesn't accept, it doesn't handle file, the, uh, file files. So we need to add it to the code, but yeah, and I have a lot of, <laughs> of trouble to, to get to, to, to get this working, but yeah, you train like a normal, uh, uh, usual machine learning model, then you convert it with TF Lite, then you convert it to C++. And can I keep, yeah, another one quickly. Nah, sure. <laughs> How large was it? <laughs> yeah, the whole model. Uh, I think in the end, three carbytes, something like that. Uh, it's, it's tiny, but I only have two layers, so it was simple. Okay, actually that's my, that was my question, like how big <laughs> <laughs> could you make the model? And did it make any difference when you had a, did a bigger model result in better results kind of like? Yeah, uh, I didn't, went further in improving the model because I was afraid of overfitting the data set. So this was my first attempt and then, oh, 99, okay, let's go. <laughs> uh, but I tried with a uh, uh, sequence model, uh, LS, LSTM, and it actually got worse than <laughs> the simple model. Uh, but yeah, I didn't do many uh, there's a name for when you're modeling. I didn't do mini modeling because I was uh, <laughs> hitting my head on the wall working with C++. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you. This is a cool project. Ah, uh, thank you. <laughs> yes. Uh, thank you for the presentation. I 
would like if you could please uh, just show once again uh, this slide about the features uh, because uh, my eyesight I couldn't really see <laughs> what the features were. <laughs> sure, sure, let's it's go there. So small. Uh, and uh, if you could uh, tell us uh, what did you take in consideration for selecting those features? What great, was the process great question. Like? This was one of my main research uh, questions. And the features here. Uh, my main, <laughs> my main uh, criteria for selecting the features was, is this feature available on LWIP and do I know how to get it? Uh, but actually, my main uh, resource for selecting the features was this reference this one, Deep Defense. Uh, they they train it because uh, one thing I, I didn't mention is that usually models for this kind of uh, detection of those attacks, usually they, they, they use uh, statistical features, like the number of attacks during a certain period of time, how many packets in the, the flow. Uh, but since we are deploying the model on the SP32, to compute these features, it, it would need a lot of computational resources, and it's not feasible. So uh, we tried to, to, to model the model with <laughs> using raw, raw feature packets. And this paper was one of the few that I, s that I see so, that also use uh, raw feature packets. And they used 20 uh, features. Um, and I use these features as my starting point. The, I'm using 10 because I couldn't find the other ones in the WIP <laughs> IP stack. But yes, this was my, my main criteria for selecting the, the features. And the features are from two layers of the TCP IP protocol. Uh, the IP is the the layer of the protocol that handles the delivering of the packets. OK, this packet needs to go to this computer and things like that. And the other features were TCP features, uh, the transport layer, and that handles the actually uh, transport. <laughs> no, transport layer is the third one. Uh, I forgot the name. I, I had a slide explaining these things, but I didn't have the time, so I took it off. But yeah, <laughs> I'm using TCP uh, uh, features mostly. And I'm not, not using UDP features here, mainly because, uh, for, the, for example, if I have a UDP packet, this will all be zero. And it kind of, there's a like one hot thing coded. Well, no. The one that you don't need to have all the features, but if you do have something in like on and off, it's sorry. Hmm, no, I think it has another name, but yeah, whatever. <laughs> well, thank you for the question. Thanks very much, everyone. Uh, I think we need to go. The day is over, but actually, we are keep on the party. It's going to have a reception sponsored by Code for Science and Society. Before we leave this room, I just have two announcements, which is we are missing an HDMI adapter and a plug adapter. So if anyone here in this room has it, please give it back. <laughs> and big round of applause for Deborah Mesquita. Fantastic talk. Thank you.